Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here, and today I want to get into a Photoshop tutorial to really try to nail down the embossed logo or text on paper. It's a really simple and classic look, but sometimes the default Photoshop bevel and emboss can come up a little bit short, so we're going to try to build on that effect and get it looking a bit more natural. We're also going to set this up to keep the type live, so you still have control over your fonts and can even add additional elements and have them get embossed on the fly. All right, let's get into it. All right, getting a new document started here, and I'm gonna work at a fairly high resolution with a width of 3840 and a height of 2160 pixels. That may seem a bit overkill, but most video and most monitors are heading toward 4K, so I want a technique that holds up at a high resolution. And background color can be anything, I'll just keep it at white and create. Then first thing I'm gonna do is bring in a paper texture and replace the background. I'm gonna open this Texture Labs Paper 129 and I'll select all and copy that, then close this one out and paste it into my document. Then Command T to scale it down and get it more or less the size of my document, something like that. And the color of the paper here is actually fairly dark for being a white paper, but I prefer that while I'm working. If I imported a paper texture that had a lot of blown out white values, it wouldn't leave me much space to work with when it comes to getting highlights or pushing the texture of the paper. So better to keep all that detail in here for now. And once everything has been comped in, I can brighten things up with an adjustment layer on top. Okay, so I'll get some text in here, T for my type tool, and this effect's gonna work with just about any font. I'm using one called Lemon Milk, which I'll link to. Color is not important, I'll just leave that at white. Command return to exit live type mode, then Command T to scale that up, and I can hold Option to scale symmetrically, get it more or less centered, something like that. Then before I get any effects going, I'm gonna do one thing which is totally optional but can be really useful. I'm gonna take this layer and drag it into its own folder. Then I'll apply any effects to the folder rather than the type layer. That way, once this is all set up, I'll show you how you can just drop anything into the folder and it'll automatically get the embossed look. All right, so with this folder selected now, let's get into the effects menu. And the first thing I'll select here is up at the top, blending options. So we've dug into blending options quite a bit in some of the other tutorials, lots of interesting things. Right now, all I'm gonna do here is take this fill opacity slider and bring it down to zero. So at this point, that looks like it did the same thing as just turning the opacity to zero, but with the fill opacity at zero, the layer may be transparent, but any effects that get applied will still be visible. So if I go now to the bevel and emboss effect here and select that, let me crank up the size a bit, and the effect does show up. So if I were to turn the fill opacity back up, you could see the original layer with the bevel and emboss effect, but with the fill opacity down, only the bevel and boss effect. So that can be really, really useful. I actually end up using this fill opacity in all kinds of scenarios in Photoshop. And for now, you could actually make the argument that this has given me an embossed paper look, which it sort of has, but it's pretty plasticky looking. Something about it just looks cheesy. So I'm gonna get into the details here and make this look a bit more realistic. First thing I'll do is reset the bevel and emboss effect to default. Then I'm gonna change the size to 35 pixels. And under shading, I want the light to come in a little bit more at an angle. I'll change this to 30 degrees. And I'm gonna bring the shadow opacity down to 25%. And finally, I can give this bevel and emboss a little bit more of a natural shape by turning on this contour option over here. So I'll click on that and select it for more options. And what I wanna do is change this curve profile. Now there are a handful of presets here, but none of them give me a very good look. So what I can do is click on the little icon itself and I get this pop-up to edit the curve directly. And all I need to do is one thing here. I'll click anywhere on this line to add a new point. Then I'm just gonna manually punch in where I want the coordinates of the point, which will be an input of 40% and an output of 60%. And that's it, I'll hit okay. And that's all for the bevel and emboss. But what I'm gonna do now is use some of the other effects here to kind of dramatize the embossing and get some details that bevel and emboss can't really accomplish on its own. So first I'll use this inner shadow effect. I can turn this on and actually use this to create a little highlight. I'll reset it to default, then all I have to do to change it from a shadow to a highlight is to change the blend mode to linear dodge and change the color from black to white. I'll bring the opacity all the way down to 15% and then change the distance from three to two pixels. And cool, that just gives a little extra definition in the highlights on the inside of the letters here, but what I think really is gonna help bring this to life is to add a little bit of shading and dimension outside of the letters. 
If this surface is raised, it's actually going to kick off a little bit of light and a little bit of shadow on the paper around it. So let's do something with a good old fashioned drop shadow effect. I'll turn on drop shadow, reset to default, then I'm going to bring the opacity all the way down to 15%. And I want the angle of this shadow to be 180 degrees opposite of the global light. So I'm going to turn off the global light and change this angle to negative 150 degrees. I'll change the distance to 4 pixels and the size to 10 pixels. Cool, so you can see here that that shadow gives me kind of a little valley here where the flat paper meets the embossed letters. I'm actually going to duplicate the drop shadow effect and flip everything around to create a highlight on the opposite sides of the letters. So I'll hit this little plus button to duplicate the drop shadow. And this time I'm going to switch the blend mode to screen and change the color to white. Then I'll reverse the angle of this one by turning the global light back on. And I'll actually bring the opacity back up a little bit here to 30%. And I like the effect this gives me with a little bit of a shadow and a highlight on the outside of the letters. I'm actually going to build on that by doubling up the drop shadow, but this time creating kind of a bigger, washier version of it. So I'll click the plus again to create another drop shadow. And this time I'm just going to change the distance to 50 pixels and the size to 50 pixels and I'll bring the opacity here all the way down to 7%. So that's subtle, but you can see it gives a sense of light kind of bouncing around and the paper being displaced a little bit. I'll do the same thing for the shadows. I'll find my darker drop shadow effect, duplicate that with the plus button, and again, bring the distance to 50, the size to 50, and opacity here can come all the way down to 5%. All right, well, that's given me all the highlights and the shadows I was looking for for the embossing, but there's one more effect that I think really helps to bring it home. What I want to emulate is how a real sheet of paper getting embossed is pressed by a metal die, and it can sometimes press the texture right out of the paper. So check out this really beautifully embossed piece of artwork and look at the way the paper gets smooth in these areas. The die has pressed in and flattened out the paper. And I'm going to create the suggestion of that by using color overlay. So I'll turn on color overlay, then reset to defaults, then I'm going to click on the color swatch and to set this color I'm going to hover over the paper in the background here. You can see the eyedropper tool comes up which allows me to sample a color. I'm going to go to the top of the frame here where I can set the properties of the eyedropper and I'll change this to the largest setting 101 by 101 which will give me a very average sample of the paper color something like that. Then I'm going to bring the opacity of this down to 50% which in a way kind of reduced the texture of the paper by 50%. It's not something you'd really notice unless you were looking for it, but if I toggle it on and off, check out how that makes the embossing just kind of stand out on the page and look nice and clean. All right, well, that wraps it up on the effects. I'm going to hit OK, and finally, I'm just going to add two levels adjustment layers over the top of the entire image for a final look. But first, if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please do hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. In the next tutorial, we're going to check out a totally different way to think about textures and masks. And I think it's going to be a really interesting one. So be sure to hit that alarm bell to be notified when that goes live. All right, let's get back into this thing to dial in a final look. I'm going to start by going down to the adjustment layers menu and selecting levels. And that defaulted its way into the group folder. I don't want it there. I'm going to drag it out so it affects all the layers. Then up here in the properties, I'll bring the black input level up to about 85, giving me the maximum amount of contrast I want anywhere in this image. Then I'll go back into my menu and create one more levels adjustment layer. And I'll use this one to get my brightest whites. So here I'm going to bring the white input level down to 176. And then I'm going to lift all those shadows up by bringing the black output level all the way up to 180. And finally, I'm going to give this image a little bit of a color cast by selecting the blue channel up here and sliding the midpoint to about 1.25, which just adds a little bit of blue into the midtones. And I already have a mask on this layer by default. I'm going to use the mask to kind of ramp this adjustment layer down across the page. I'll select my gradient tool with G. I'll press D to make sure I'm using default black and white. And then I'm just going to drag a gradient into the mask here and give it a nice smooth transition across the whole image. And I can try that as many times as I like, maybe even zoom out and drag it outside of the document bounds. Try to get a good ramp that gives me a nice balance of lights and darks, something about like that. All right, well, that is the embossed look, but let me show you something kind of cool about this setup. 
Because I dropped the text into a folder at the beginning and applied the effects to the folder, I can now put anything I want in that folder and experiment with this look. So let's say I want to add a little flourish along with the type. I'll create something using my custom shapes tool, which I can find hiding under the rectangle tool. It's this little squiggly star. Then at the top, I can use the drop down menu for some preset shapes. And if I click the gear, there are even a few more sections. So let's try ornaments. And maybe I'll try this little fleur de lis. And I can drag one of these out with the custom shapes tool. Then check out what happens if I drag this shape layer into the group folder. Just like that, anything that gets dropped into the folder gets all those effects applied automatically and gets embossed. So I'm going to duplicate that layer with a Command J. And as long as the layer is inside of the folder, it automatically is just another embossed shape. So I'll move this one over here. And if you had a logo or whatever you wanted embossed, you could just drop it into this folder. Well, that basically wraps it up. I really like this setup. It's a fun one to try different fonts or shapes with and see how it looks. I hope this technique will be useful for you. Please let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button. You can stop by texturelabs.org to find paper textures and ink and much, much more. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.